الحمد للہ رب العالمین والعاقبت للمتقین وصل اللہ وسلم على اشرف الانبیاء ومرسلین نبینا محمد وعلى علی وصحبہ اجمعین ومن سارا لمنہجہم وقتفا اثرہم الی یوم الدین اما بعد ایو لحبت فی اللہ I want to very briefly talk about the importance of iftar wa suhoor. And iftar is when we, of course, break our fast. And suhoor is taking a meal before we fast, <clears throat> right before the time. So I want to talk about some of the uh, conditions and, and some uh, read some hadith, a uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu regarding the importance of taking suhoor. And this is an encouragement for myself and my brothers and sisters because Fajr is so early in many of our localities since it's uh, Ramadan uh, is now coming in these, uh, these summer months that the Fajr prayer is, is, is very early and the Maghrib prayer is, is very late. So the days are very long. We're fasting very long, lengthy periods of time. And due to this earliness, especially I find myself a habit after the first week or so, maybe less, I find it very difficult to get up and take my suhoor, you know, to prepare any meal. Instead, I try to do it in the middle of the night or even after Isha, and then I get in such bad habits, especially if you're by yourself, where you begin to, uh, I find myself maybe having only one meal a day during Ramadan. And that you want to at least practice the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and get the barakah of suhoor. Narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aqal, tasahharu, fa'inna fi suhoor baraka. The Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam said, take suhoor, and remember, al-amr yufid al wujub he commanded us to have suhoor. For verily, with suhoor there is barakah. Meaning there's blessings in taking suhoor. So try your best to get up and, and have a little something. Even if it's a date and some water. And definitely keep yourself hydrated during this Ramadan. So drink lots of fluids during the time of suhoor and possibly in the, in, even in the evening when you break your fast. And as we said al Amr fi the wujub that whenever we have a commandment in the Sharia from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the asl of that command, the, the command, the, the general principle is that that command means that it's an obligation. Unless you have other nusus, other texts from the Quran and the Sunnah to illustrate that that emr is no, lo no longer you feed the wujub, but now that it is down from uh, uh, wajib to mustahab to recommend it, to recommend it, or from mustahab to uh, maybe mubah or makru, etc. Ahabati fillah, listen to this hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim on Amr, Amr ibn As, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna fadl مَا بَيْنَ سِيَامِنَا وَسِيَامَ أَهْلَ كِتَابِ أَكْلَةَ سُحُورِ The Prophet ﷺ said, the, the benefit or the, the, if you compare our fasting to the fasting of the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, the benefit of our fasting or what makes our fasting better is eating suhoor. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, in the hadith of uh, Amr ibn As. And in a hadith, Akhraju Imam Ahmed wa Abu Dawood wa ghayrihima an Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma an a nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal as-suhoor kulluhu baraka fala tad'uha tad'uhu walau an yajra' أَهَدَكُمْ جَرْعَةٌ جَرْعَةٌ مِنْ مَا فَإِنَّ إِلَى وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى 
mutasahirin. Ahabati fillah in this hadith, the hadith that was collected in, uh, narrated by, uh, collected in Imam Ahmed and Abu Dawood and other than them in the hadith books, the hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Suhoor, you know, taking this suhoor, this breakfast, all of it is, is blessed. Kulluhu barakah. So don't leave it. Then he commanded again, remember, Fala tad'u. He said, don't leave it. Let uh, tada'u. Don't leave it. Wallo and yajra. Even if you took a sip, if one of you took a sip from uh, a sip of water, for verily Allah, or verily Allah and his angels, yusalluna ala mutasahirin. So, Habati Filah, this shows us the importance of having suhoor, and that this is a amal min amal asariha. And that you'll be rewarded tremendously by having suhoor. So don't forget it. Even as the Prophet ﷺ said, if it is just taking a, a sip of water. And then in another hadith, in the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ni'am suhoor al mu'min al timam. The Prophet ﷺ said, in a hadith, akhrajhu Abu Dawood, في كتاب السيام وحديث هو صحيح. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in this hadith, he said, the blessed suhoor or the the most blessed suhoor for the mu'min is a date. So don't forget to try to get some dates which seems to be very common for the Muslims around the world for those who are able to get dates it's a, it's a very co common Muslim cultural practice uh, around the world so don't forget to get yourself some dates those are some of the importance and some nasus mentioning suhoor along with that we'll mention a few other uh, uh, benefits about the sunnah of suhoor. This is related to the sunnah of suhoor as well. The first thing, or the first sunnah, and yes, have a sa'im niyat, a niyat siyamihi. And that is that with regards to fasting and suhoor, is that take it with the intention to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to come closer to Allah by eating this food, this suhoor, this breakfast, to bring you closer to Allah by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that it, it, it was a, a blessed uh, deed to take suhoor, which is going to benefit you in your ibadah because when you have that food, that's going to help you function throughout the day to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to interact righteously with others. And obviously, the if we don't have uh, food and water, that affects our, that can also have an effect on our mental state and our physical state and how we interact with others. Especially if you're excessively hungry, you can become upset, you can become uh, grouchy, and this can be reflected in how you treat others. So take the barakah and follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ by taking the suhoor. Another sunnah of suhoor, that it's also from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and it's recommended to delay the suhoor, delay this breakfast until, uh, delay this to the, to the last, right before a Fajr comes in, right before the time of Fajr, Tulu al Fajr. Unless you're afraid, you don't know exactly when it's coming, then don't press, uh, don't uh, uh, go to the limits like that, 
but rather <clears throat> be cautious and 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 take your sahur uh, when you won't be pressed pressed for time. So the best is to do it as close as you can to Fajr, unless you're afraid that you might uh, you might go beyond the bounds and you might end up eating or being too rushed for your sahur. And this is, uh, the, the evidence for this is the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, لا تزل, uh, لا يزل الناس بخير ما عجلوا الفطر وأخروا سهور وأخروا السهور The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, as reported in Bukhari and Muslim, people will not cease to be on good or people will continue to be on good as long as they hasten to break their fast when it's time, when the Adhan comes in, when, when Maghrib comes in, break your fast immediately. That, that's from the Sunnah. And delay the Suhoor, meaning eat your Suhoor uh, up to the Tulul al-Fajr. You know, up to that time. So try to delay it. Try to get up specifically and have that Suhoor right before you're going to uh, begin fasting. Before the time comes in. Meaning, don't, don't just have a big meal at night and then sleep and then the Fajr comes and you had no Suhoor. So this shows us that the Prophet said the people will continue to be on Khair as long as they do this practice. Follow the Sunnah, the Message of Allah وسلم, And that's the deal that it's mustahab to delay the Suhoor. And it's also the deal that it's mustahab to, uh, to hurry to break your fast. Also, the Prophet والسلام, as was narrated, uh, narrated in Bukhari Muslim, on Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala tasaharna ma nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thumma qama ila salat. And this is also showing us that, uh, you know, having that suhoor right before up to salat, up to the time that it was, uh, the salat came in. He said, we... We had suhoor with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then we established the prayer, meaning that it was all the way up to fajr prayer. So uh, that is from the Sunnah, the Message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you want to follow that guidance and get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa taala, and make sure your niyyah is to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, that you're coming closer to Allah azza wa jal. Uh, a third Sunnah that we want to strive to do, habitifillah. ما يفعله كثير من الناس من الأكل في وسط الليل. This is something. This is a, a sunnah. This is what we want to be aware of. So he's saying that we should be cautious of following the activity of what many many people do, which is uh, eating in the middle of the night. And then when it comes close to Fajr, then the people go to sleep. And what is so uh, problematic about this, also what we find, uh, one of the things, this is for those who even pray the Fajr prayer, is they become, from this activity, they tend to become lazy with regards to Salat al-Fajr. And again, this is a time of great juhud, you know, of great um, uh, uh, striving and difficulty. Because Fajr is so early. So it's already tough enough. And it depends on where your locality, where we are, it's 3. Fajr, the Adhan comes in about 3.10 in the morning. And so to be prepared and already, you know, that's hard enough trying to do that. And to try to make it to the masjid too. And, but to be in a situation where that, that Fajr prayer is so early, and then to get up and have suhoor, that takes even, meaning getting up even a little earlier. And that's, that's not easy. And that's that juhud. That's that striving that you'll be tremendously rewarded for. So this is for those who do pray. What about those who don't even pray? Or they pray, but they just miss the Fajr prayer in the masjid for the men. And they miss the Fajr. Matter of fact, they pray Salat the Fajr outside of its time even. So they get up, or maybe they stay up all night eating 
watching TV or whatever activities they do, and then they sleep right before Fajr and sleep through the Fajr prayer. And this is a habit of theirs. This is, this is sinfulness, and it's a very dangerous practice. And not, of course, Min Baba Ola, or first and foremost, it contradicts the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, but it's also sinfulness because now you're missing the prayer. Not just, it's, it's bad enough for those who get up lazy for that prayer, you know, and due to their, their practice, and then they miss the suhoor. And this is, is a, something easy to fall into with it being so early. It's not, it's not easy. It's not easy to have that balance. And especially as Ramadan goes. Uh, so beware of that ahabit fillah. And we'll leave off there. And in the next sitting, we'll talk about fitr, some of the sunnah of fitr. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.